everybody, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me on here on Instagram as Z Reptiles. And this is Queso, my leopard gecko. I was hoping to use a snake for this video, but they all ate the other night, so I'm not handling them yet. And she was asking to come out, so she's the one joining us for this video. We'll see how long she lasts. She's usually good at first, and then she gets the zoomies, and it's completely uncontrollable. So with this video, I want to talk a little bit about my personal standards of care, what I expect from myself as a reptile keeper. So it's kind of like how I've... Whoop. Okay, so don't jump. Why are you jumping? You're not a crested gecko. Stop jumping. I got her for education. And she's like impossible to handle because she thinks she's part crested gecko. So I have to keep like... This is going to take forever to film because I can't talk and watch her at the same time. Cause she just starts moving and jumping and zooming all over. Okay, we're gonna put her back because it's gonna take me 10 years to film this video. Snicket is watching and he looks like he wants to come out but he literally just ate. So you're staying in there for another day. It's only been like 24 hours. So anyway, I wanna talk about my personal standards of care, what I expect from myself. So it's kind of like how I've grown as a reptile keeper because the standards of care I have now Maybe I didn't even envision when I started keeping reptiles. So maybe these are goals that you guys can, you know, give yourselves as well. Maybe these will inspire you to kind of create your own standards of care. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys some examples of what I have set for myself and what I expect from myself. The reptile hobby is always changing, always growing, learning new things, expanding. So I think it's good to continuously talk about you know, how you can advance your reptile keeping. What things can you do to up the level of care you're giving your animals, even if it's something super simple and easy. So I have my list. I try to think of the care standards that I have and make a list so that I had something to talk about in this video. So I've got it right here because I know if I sat down without a list, I would forget things. So first and foremost, this is something you guys have heard me say a lot in my videos. Bigger is better. Once I started upgrading my animals last summer, I became addicted to giving them bigger enclosures. And some of the new ones I did, I'm now going, I wish I went bigger. But it's like, I paid all this money for them, I spent all this time building them with my dad. Just like, kinda want some of them to be bigger now though. So it's kinda where I'm at. It's like, I got so addicted to giving everyone bigger enclosures, it's like, I wanna keep going bigger. And so yeah, trying to plan my future reptile room while house shopping right now, looking for a space that has a room big enough for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so bigger is better. That's my care, number one care standard. Um, going as big as I can for my animals. You know, here's the bare minimum. Let's see if we can exceed that and kind of make it really impressive. So some of mine are bare minimum. Like my Bearded Dragon, my Jules Lacerda, my Yormastix, those are 4 by 2 by 2s Now that I've done it, there's a couple that I would have liked to make 5 by 2 by 2 or 5 by 3 by 2 We'll see what the future holds. I put a lot of work into these enclosures, but we'll see what the future holds. Okay, care standard number 2 is encouraging natural behaviors. Does that go with something else? It does. So that kind of goes with the next thing, so I'll read the two. So encouraging natural behaviors. And the next thing I was gonna say is giving them a choice. So this kind of goes back to all the th things I've said about snake racks. In some of my videos, you know I've talked about snake racks. I don't like snake racks. I don't like the limits that they put on what you can give your animals. I know there are very big racks out there. People have told me this. I still don't agree with them. In my opinion, you should be encouraging them to try to exhibit and perform their natural behaviors. Hunting, climbing, burrowing, um, exploring, like all these things that you can be encouraging your animals to do. I think you should provide an environment that allows them to do that. And then going off of that is give them the choice. So ball pythons, people say ball pythons don't climb. Every night, Snicket and Kahlua are out trying to climb. Now they don't really have the room for that right now or the means to do that, um, but the, I am in the process of planning their new upgrades. In fact, Kalua actually has his almost finished being built in my garage right now. And the plan is to give them the option to climb. They have like things they can climb on in here, but like nothing crazy. So I wanna be able to give them that option. 
So that's just a good example. People say ball pythons don't climb. Give them the option. They can't climb if you don't give them the choice to. If I'm the one keeping them in captivity, I'm the one caring for them, I should be giving them choices of what they want to do, not telling them how to live their life. So I'm not gonna put them on paper towel and say, you don't even have the option to burrow if you want. You can't, I took that option away from you. Or not giving them something to climb on. Now you can't climb because I took that option away from you. So I don't wanna do that. I want to give my animals the choices to climb, bury, do whatever they want. I don't want to restrict them. I don't want to take choices away from them. I want to put the ball in their court by giving them all of the opportunities I can for them to exhibit different behaviors. So you'll notice up here in Phoenix's enclosure, my corn snake, right, right up there. There are snakes that come right off the wall um, from her background, options to climb, things to hide in, things to climb on, lots of different options. Okay, um, this kind of goes off of building things. I would like my snakes to be able to fully stretch out in their enclosures. Some of them are cutting it a little short. Um, I think Calypso, my rainbow boa, and Phoenix, my corn snake, might be just a little short. They might be just over four foot long, and the enclosures are four foot long. Um, pretty darn close. But like Samoa and Kronk, I'm actually planning on building eight foot enclosures for them because I want them to be able to fully stretch out. I don't want them to have to be restricted. I don't want them to have to bend along two sides to be able to fit. I want them to be able to fully stretch out. And this kind of goes back to choice again. I don't want to restrict how they have to fit in their enclosure to be comfortable. If they want to fully stretch out, they should be able to fully stretch out. So that is my end goal while I'm building all these enclosures and doing these upgrades is I want my snakes to be able to stretch out. Okay, this is my last one that kind of goes along with care is UVB. I plan to give everyone UVB. Most of my animals do have UVB now. Um, some don't yet, but when they have their new upgrades, they will. So in the end, my goal is that every animal will have UVB. Every single animal because again in the wild they would be exposed to it even just a little tiny teensy tiny bit so who am i to take that option away from them i want to be able to provide that so if they want to use it it is there for them okay we have two standards left these kind of get away from my personal care and get a little more into the youtube instagram side of reptile keeping so the first one is remembering that everyone starts somewhere. I think back on where I started and how far I've come and how far yeah I still have to go and it's amazing the growth. When I started I, I thought I was a great keeper you know. I didn't have a ton of experience to back myself up but I thought I was doing pretty darn good but now seeing where I am like today and comparing it back to then I'm like dang <laughs> I am surprised I didn't get more hate comments on YouTube for some of the things I posted because holy cow, wow. <laughs> but I had the chance and the opportunity to grow and learn and now I see where I am and what plans I have for the future and I wouldn't be this far ahead and have these plans if I didn't have that chance to grow. You know, I didn't have people commenting on everything I did saying how bad things were, that I was making mistakes, or that, you know, why would you do that? I do it this way, this is better. I think it's important to keep that in mind when we're scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, is just remembering that everyone starts somewhere, no one's going to be on your level or on an expert's level overnight. It's taken me years to get to where I am now years of watching videos, years of going to different zoos, years of talking to people and meeting people and hearing what other people are doing and researching to get to where I am now. So maybe we help those people, kind of guide them in the right direction, but we don't beat them down because how else are they going to learn and grow if you're beating them down? So that's kind of another standard I have for myself is just you know, remembering that we all start somewhere and that, you know, I didn't start where I am now. I had to 
take a couple of years to get here. <laughs> and then lastly, another personal one for me is I will never try to educate someone on species that I have never kept. It's one of my pet peeves, I didn't include in my pet peeve video, but one of my pet peeves is when people try to educate you on the care and husbandry of an animal they've never worked with. Because there's lots of things that I've read over the years about animals, but keeping them, I change my mind on some things, I find better ways of doing some things, and if I didn't keep an animal myself to discover this, I would be giving information that I personally don't do, don't believe in, don't agree with, maybe found something a better alternative. I wouldn't know all that without keeping the species first. And that's why it took me how many years? Two, three years to make a jewel disorder to care guide. I don't make care guides until I've had an animal for at least a year. But then I have to feel super confident in what I'm doing, enough to tell people, this is what I'm doing, this is what works for me. It took me like two to three years to commit to a care guide for Crikey, for Jewel Desertas. So it took me that long to talk about the care and husbandry of an animal that I have. I should not be educating people on the care and husbandry of animals that I don't have. I mean, if you want to ask a general question about like UVB brands um, or, you know, automatic misters, like general information like that, you know, creating a background. That stuff, I don't have a problem with people talking about. Like, if that's like something specific, like I can be like Arcadia T5HO UVBs, go to the Arcadia Lighting Guide, it will help you determine what you need. These are the websites that sell these lights that you can buy them at. I'll do that. But if you ask me about the diet, temperatures, whatever, of an animal that I've never had, I'm gonna say, I'm sorry, I have no experience with that animal. I recommend finding someone that does, or a breeder, or you know, contact a zoo, I don't know, just, I don't have that animal. So it's one of my pet peeves when I see people try to educate on animals and talk about their care when they have no experience with them. Because you change your mind on some things when you have that personal experience. All right, and those are my personal standards of care, at least the ones that I could think of, like the big ones that I talk about or that I constantly think about. So if you guys have any personal standards of care for yourself, I'd love to know what they are. You can leave them in the comments. I'll definitely read through them. Um, you know, you guys might inspire me to come up with some more personal care standards for myself, but I'd love to know what standards of care you guys have for yourself and your animals. So definitely leave those in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching another video and I will see you for the next one. Bye.